Hi and welcome to my video in which I will show how to install Lattice Diamond on Linux. The Lattice Diamond distribution is actually only supported for Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE Linux, but since most people will have a different distribution, I will try to cover on how to set it up on a different type of distribution. In my case this will be Gen 2, but uh, I'll try to keep the instructions as broad as possible and explain what I'm doing so that you can port it for example to Ubuntu or any other distribution that you like. So we are going to start very easy by going to the lettucesemi.com website, going to downloads software and then selecting lettuce diamond for download. Uh, if you go to download here and scroll down you will see that there's a option to download it for Linux you have to read the license agreement to be able to download it. The file is actually rather large. Um, it's about 1.6 gigabytes, so this might take a while. After you've completed this step, you will need to find out the MAC address of your network card because the free license that uh, comes with Lattice Diamond will only work on a PC with that network card. So for this you open up a console and type in ifconfig eth0 and the hw address, the hardware address, is actually your MAC address. So back on the Lattice website you again go to Downloads Software, go to Lattice Diamond and click the link that says a free license can be requested. Then go back to your terminal and copy the MAC address into the clipboard insert it into the host NIC field, verify that you're not an employee of Cadence and hit the generate license button. After a few minutes you should receive a mail that has a license stat attachment. Save this file into a folder that I've called Lattice in my home directory. By now the download should have completed and you can check the MD5 sum that is available on the web page as a download. Um, this uh, can be achieved by typing md5sum and then the file that you downloaded. Verify that those are equal so you can know that the file is actually intact. With the RPM that Lattice provides, actually using RPM to tar GZ was not possible for me, so therefore we are going to take another approach. We are going to invoke RPM offset and manually copy the CPIO payload out of the RPM and then extract it from there. For this, first use RPM offset on the file and then use DD with a block size that equals the number that RPM offset told you. Skip the first block and output it into a extracted file. The correct file extension should be .cpio.gz since it's a gzipped CPIO archive. After DD has finished, you can first use the file command to actually check that the image that you extracted from the RPM is a gzipped file. Then you should create a bin directory and extract the contents of this gzipped CPIO archive into that bin directory. After the extraction has finished, which might take a while, you can examine the folder structure that has been created. And in this bin directory you'll actually find that the binaries are in the subdirectory user local diamond 1.4 slash bin slash lin. Now it's time to convert this binary path of the lattice tools to a absolute path. This can be easily done by prepending $home and letters, which is the directory that I put the files in. After you are finished with that, open your favorite editor and create a file called environment. In this file you just write one line, which is path equals $path and then a colon and the separated absolute path of the lattice directories. This will ensure that once you source the environment file by hitting dot environment, um, the path of the lattice tools will actually be added to your system path and so the tools will be found. Select an arbitrary binary, for example STPGen, and try to execute it. 
It should be able to find the executable, although it cannot be successfully executed since the necessary libraries are not yet found within the path. In order for the operating system to find the libraries, we are first going to symlink them together. So you change the directory to lattice bin and create a lib subdirectory there and execute the find command as it is shown in the description below. This will create symlinks to every shared object file in the home lattice bin lib directory. This is the subdirectory that we will later on refer to using the ld library path environment variable. For this, open up the environment file again and add a second line which starts with export ld underscore library underscore path and then the absolute path to the library directory that we just created. It's very important that this is an absolute path, otherwise this will not work. You can check your progress by sourcing the environment file and then outputting the contents of the LD library path variable and afterwards by checking that for example the stpgen tool actually starts up. After you've successfully sourced your environment variable you can try to start up Lettuce Diamond by just typing diamond and hitting enter. The first startup will fail because the license file is not where it's supposed to be. So copy the license file that came with the email from Lattice into the place that they expect the license file to be and try again to start Lattice Diamond. This time it should work. After Lattice Diamond has started up create a new project. Call it test project and just uh, don't add any source files yet. Select the Lattice ECP2 processor and just hit next until the wizard is finished. Afterwards right click input files and select add new file. Select VHDL files, type in some name for this file and then copy and paste the VHDL contents of a simple 4-bit counter that I have prepared in advance here. You'll find the link to this file in the description below. So you will copy the VHDL into Lattice Diamond, paste it in there, and this will be the first file that you will be able to synthesize using Lattice Diamond. So if you go to the Process tab and right-click Synthesize Design and hit the Run, you will actually find out that the synthesis failed. If you bring up the output window, it will show you an explanation. It will say that it cannot find a certain file. Notice that it says that your platform is unknown and it tries to find this string unknown in the path of the file that it's trying to execute. Also notice that it will show you the exact command line of the command which failed which we are later using to find out how to reproduce this problem and how to fix it. So on the command line go to your project directory and copy and paste the synpwrap command line that it showed you as failed. You will notice that it reproduces the exact same error message as in the output window of Lattice Diamond. Then as a trick, I usually use strace on these commands to see where they get their data from. In this case, I'm actually wanting to know where this string unknown came from. So I'm using strace-ff, which means follow forks, and I'm redirecting the standard error output to the standard output by using to redirect and then ampersand one, and I grab for the string and you will actually see very quickly that there is a read command which reads out of a file that looks like a bash script and it's the file descriptor 3 and it contains this string 3. So then we run strace again but this time we redirect into the file called x and on this file x we can use less and then again search for this string unknown and a few lines prior to the actual read we will see the open and we will see the name of the file that actually contains the string unknown. So next we open up our editor and edit this file 
and in the second line we will change platform to Linux. Then we run the commands in prep again and lo and behold we will see that it now works and does a synthesis. Now basic synthesis should also work within Lattice Diamond. You can check this by generating a bitstream file and then hitting the floor plan view and zooming in and you will see some macro cells and some placements within there. When you however try to get the physical view of the design that you synthesized, Lattice Diamond will complain that it cannot find a Adobe font and will immediately terminate. So we will now fix this problem too. Copy this string descriptor into a file so we can later refer to it. Open up a terminal and type xzq. You will notice the font path that your system is currently using. Then type x font cell. maybe you will need to install this tool, and uh, you will see the x fonts that your system has available at the moment. You'll see that my system does not even have the Adobe Foundry installed at all. Therefore, Lattice Diamond cannot find this font that it's searching for and will just bail out. Instead of actually downloading some proprietary Adobe file, we will just use a font that we have available and make Lattice think that it actually refers to the correct font file. For this, first let's recall the font file that Lattice was actually searching for. Then have a look at the fonts.dir file that is actually within the directory that xzq told you it was looking for for fonts. This file will contain a list of all fonts and the files that they are stored in that are available for the X Windows system. Then do a grab on this fonts.dir file and search for the string that Lattice Diamond was also searching for. Beware that the font string will start with a dash and therefore you will have to specify the command line option double dash for grab so that grab does not think that you're specifying another option rather than a search pattern. Also remember to replace all stars by dot star to turn them into regular expressions. On the first try you will see that you will find no occurrences at all which is actually true because the font is not installed. Then try to replace the font foundry by dot star. You will see that on my system this will also not yield any results. In the next step I will replace the font name Helvetica by dot star and now you will see that I have some hits. They are not exact matches but they come close. I will choose the first file which is 6x10 ISO 8859 .pcf.gz as the file that I will make Lattice Diamond think that is the correct font file. For this I will copy it from the user share fonts misc directory to a bin fonts directory that I just created as a subdirectory to the Lattice directory. Then I will cd to this directory and create a file called fonts.dir as we saw in the user share fonts.dir file, the first line should be 1, which is the number of fonts contained within the directory. And on the second line, I will uh, specify the file name, which is the 6x10. And as a font name, I will specify the font name that Lattice Diamond was actually looking for. So now we will need to tell the X Windows system that it should also look in this newly created font directory of ours. For this we can use xz plus fp and we will edit our environment file again and we will specify a third line in there which says xz plus fp and then the font directory that we just created. By sourcing our environment again and checking with xzq we should see that the font path has now been extended and now includes our newly created font directory. We can then also check using X font cell if this Adobe Helvetica font can actually be found. And as you can see, here it is, and this is actually the font that Lattice Diamond will later on find.
After we have finished with all this, we can again start up Lettuce Diamond and open up the physical view. And this should now work and show us the physical structure of our layout. Down here you will find uh, the actual circuitry which you can zoom in. And if you zoom in really close, you can actually you are actually able to find some text on there which uses the font that we just set up here. So now you can use Lattice Diamond on your Linux system. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.